Looking for improvements of the kayak paddling technique we have to optimize the multiple forces going through the athlete's body, as the active muscles effort, reaction forces within the system, inertial loads, environment resistance, etc. Watching the technique, we cannot see these forces, they are controlled by the athlete's feeling only, but they become a primary object to manage once the athlete starts paddle fast. The traditional understanding of the human motor regulation states that an athlete also doesn't control all little details of the movement, rather operates a hierarchy of the integral motion commands, more or less comprehensive depending of the level of abilities. Bernstein, 1947 This means that we have to somehow manipulate the athlete's perception to improve them, rather than just operate the visual technique image. Cognitive process will be more efficient if we manage the actions of the athletes, their feelings and understanding of the technique, rather than just the visual characteristics of the motion. For this purpose, the whole paddling action can be broken down into a limited set of primary actions, core technique tasks. These tasks represent the most relevant biomechanical parameters of the paddling technique and should indicate to the athletes what and why they have to do and feel to optimize their efficiency, rather than just give them a descriptive recommendation how their motion should to look like. All tasks are grouped within three major groups as manage the paddle, manage the rotation and run the boat. In this presentation we focus on the tasks relevant to efficiently manage the rotation of whole body forward around the blade. The concepts of this video are illustrated on the technique of the best British athletes of last two Olympic cycles, Edward McKeever, Olympic champion 2012 and world champion in K1 200 meters, Liam Heath, Olympic champion 2016 in K1 200 meters, World and Olympic medalist from 2010 to 2016 in K2 200 meters, John Schofield, multiple Olympic and world medalist from 2010 to 2016 in K2 200 meters with Liam Heath. Rotate around the blade. Concerning the term. The primary step in teaching the body rotation in kayak supposes to establish the athlete's intention to propel the boat rotating whole body forward around the blade rather than just simply pulling the paddle shaft backwards. Usually we observe the movement of a canoeist in relation to the boat, within a coordinate system attached to the boat. Also, talking about the paddling technique, we traditionally mention the pull as the athlete's action to make travel the boat. But this term supposes an action directed backwards. However the eventual target of the paddling consists in displacement of the boat forward past the paddle blade. The expression rotate around the blade describes that the blade stays stationary in the water and the athlete moves the boat past the blade rotating his body with a center of rotation attached to the blade, rather than to the boat. It seems to be a very obvious concept. But on the practice this concept often doesn't work even for the well-experienced athletes, and they can waste a significant amount of energy to spin the paddle around the body. The athlete's ability to transform his, her rotational movement inside of the boat into the boat advances predominantly limits the efficiency of the kayak paddling technique. The Boat Mass Acceleration the body mass constitutes the main obstacle to accelerate the boat. The water resistance at the race pace only reaches around 20 kilograms. However the body mass acceleration requires force more than 30 kilograms for an average male athlete at race speed. The rotational momentum, torque, to rotate the whole body mass around the blade is about 50% higher than the water resistance to the boat movement. Also this effort is applied at a certain distance away from the boat's trajectory, and the whole motion isn't just direct boat propulsion, rather it is a torque around an external support point. Therefore, the propelling action requires pretty sophisticated technical skills and knowledge. Set the lever. 
The crucial requirement to propel the boat supposes set the paddle as a solid mechanical lever with the center of rotation at the neck of the paddle blade. In order to get be locked in the water and don't slip backwards, the paddle blade must attack the water surface directed forward and with the speed higher than the boat advancing speed. This aspect of the blade movement is described in details in the previous video kayak technique, make a pivot, search on YouTube. As we have shown before, the reaction force of the water on the blade can be split in two vectors. One of them is directed forwards as a water reaction on the propelling effort and the second one is directed upwards as a reaction on the immersion of the blade. The direction and speed of the blade movement are controlled by the coordination of a virtual triangle made by the pushing shoulder, top hand, pulling hand. Work of the top hand The arms are doing a different job within this triangle to manage these two vectors. While the pulling arm propels the boat applying an effort directed straight backwards, the top hand manages the efficiency of the work of the blade in the water. The top hand plays a crucial role in creating from the paddle a lever to propel the boat, it has a full control of the blade's trajectory, angles, speed of movement and the length of the lever. The action of the top hand must be fast enough to make the blade moving faster than the water movement past the boat. Therefore the top hand should operate independently from the shoulder to be faster than the average speed of the whole system. The power within the triangle must be led by the top shoulder and directed forward through the top hand into the paddle shaft and the blade. Work of the pulling arm the traction effort during the pull must be directed only backwards and be a part of the rotational effort advancing the boat. The athlete should not intend to keep the pulling arm straight and use it to immerse the blade. This is a common error in the paddling technique. It produces a conflict between the effort of the pulling arm directed downwards and of the pulling effort of the same arm. Therefore this intention would just slow down the whole motion. The central point of attention could be on the elbow of the pulling arm. It should be directed straight backwards. The pulling hand should only grip the paddle strong enough to bring the body forward. The biceps takes an important part of this effort, and the triceps should let the arm to bend progressively in the course of the stroke. The blade trajectory and speed must be fully controlled by the top hand. Its effort along the shaft plays a fundamental role to avoid a necessity to use the pulling arm to immerse the blade. Athlete's Feeling The target to rotate around the blade produces a fundamental impact on the athlete's intentions and feeling. The athlete should be focused on the displacement of whole system forward rather than on the pulling action itself. The mental focus of the athlete should be on the acceleration of the opposite hip and of the whole opposite side of the body in relation to the pulling blade, as of the most important subject reflecting the efficiency of the stroke. The athlete should feel as he is using a bubble, or a ball, of water to propel the boat forward, and all parts of his body are rotating forward around this bubble. The paddle must be felt as a lever with an immovable point of rotation in the water, rather than as an object to pull it backwards. The athlete should feel grabbing more water than can move, and both hands are twisting this lever around a point in the water. The front muscles must to develop an effort to move the body forward equal or greater than the pulling effort of the back muscles. During all stroke the athlete should feel this rotational effort across the abdominal area connecting the pulling and pushing sides of his body. A firm motion of the top hand for the catch is a fundamental factor to get a proper athlete's feeling of water and of the power application. Drive with the hips hips drive or torso twist. The consequent fundamental requirement for an efficient paddling technique consists in a predominant use of the largest muscles of torso and legs to propel the boat. 
the maximum shoulders rotation for mechanically efficient boat propulsion must be approximately within an angle of 45 degrees. This amplitude can be provided through two main methods, twisting the torso and, or, rotating the pelvis through the movement of the hips. The maximum anthropometric capacity for the twist of the torso would be around 45 degrees. The possibility to rotate the pelvis by the hip movement is also the same. So, it is just a matter of a choice of which is the more efficient motion. Historically, canoeing technique tends to use the chest rotation and the large muscles of shoulders as a motor of the boat propulsion. But the muscles which are twisting the chest, mainly the oblique and the psoas, are relatively weak and slow. The chest rotation using the muscles around the waist at racing speed can just slow down the whole motion. Also the majority of muscles connecting the thorax to the pelvis, as the abdomen muscles, abs, lumbar, etc. are designed more to just lock them together. They tend to slow down the torso twist rather than facilitate it. Therefore it is more efficient just to lock the thorax to the pelvis, make from them a single rigid biomechanical unit, and focus on providing the upper body rotation by the motion of the hips. John Schofield Olympic medalist in London 2012 and Rio 2016 in K2 200 meters, might be one of the best examples of using the hips to move the boat. Hips coordination. So, the torso rotation isn't a just a simple twisting in the middle of the boat seat. It is a specific sophisticated technical element targeted to accelerate the body mass and extend the length of the glide after the stroke. The motion of hips includes the propulsion pressure on the boat forward through footrest by pushing leg, and also the effort the opposite pulling feet to shift forward the opposite side of pelvis. As we have shown in the previous video Lock the Blade, search on YouTube. The pressure of the pushing leg on the footrest initiates the body rotation for the catch and locks the frame. At this time the pelvis presses to the back of the seat from the pulling side. This pressure gives stability to whole body to cope with the sharp rise of the force on the blade during the catch, and can reach a magnitude twice as higher as the force on the blade. This graphs show the forces applied and affecting to the athlete's body within the boat as legs pressure forces on the footrest and the seat in the horizontal and sagittal planes. In continuation during the second part of the stroke, the opposite side of pelvis rebounds from the back of the seat reflecting the acceleration of the body mass to glide the boat during the air phase. This rebounding is a fundamental technique element making difference with just a simple pelvis rotation in the middle of the seat. It often isn't even realized by the athlete but constitutes a fundamental part of a sophisticated specific feeling. The action of the pushing leg is a primary fundamental action, targeted to advance the boat and support the work of the paddle in the water. The work of the pulling leg makes a complementary effort to the muscles of torso to advance it forward around the blade. It has to be coordinated with the whole body intention to extend the glide. Both legs together must work in conjunction to accelerate the center of the athlete's body mass situated around the opposite hip. This is a fundamental target of the leg's coordination during the stroke. The action of the legs on the catch must be quick enough to lock the blade in the water and avoid its displacement backwards. But also a too quick shift, shot of the pushing hip backwards is one of common faults in the paddling technique. Both hips should be advancing forward only, and rotate the pelvis around the blade during whole stroke. The Amplitude The maximum amplitude of the leg's movement must be within an effective range. The pushing leg should reach its maximum extension, but it should not be fully straightened at the end of the action. It must be partially bent, reserving a little angle of 3-5 degrees to be ready to return quickly forward up for the next stroke. Otherwise the initial movement of the knee upwards takes too long time. The opposite knee must come up at the end of the stroke bent as much as possible to maximize the pelvis rotation.
the distance between the footrest and the seat must be adjusted then to the range of the effective leg extension. The distance from the footrest to the back edge of the seat ideally should respect the optimum legs extension at the maximum speed. An efficient full amplitude work of the legs is able to rotate athlete's torso for the required 45 degrees to one side and makes unnecessary any additional twist of torso. However the athlete still must maximize the amplitude of the stroke by extending forward the shoulder. The muscles of the shoulder blade which are executing the stroke, mainly rhomboids and trapezium, are small and weak relatively to the power applied by the legs. Therefore this extension must be used within an optimum range. It should not sacrifice the rigidness of the force transmission from the legs to the paddle. The Key Points the key points to manage the legs drive are The main rotation effort comes from the legs, not from the torso. The legs rotational action starts before the catch. Legs extension must be maximized within an efficient range. The proportion of force applied by the legs and by the upper body must be around 70 versus 30 percent in favor of the legs. Lock the frame. The term frame. To accelerate the center of the body mass we need somehow coordinate the acceleration of all segments of the body which make up this mass. At the same time the parts of the athlete's body are located at different distance from the center of rotation at the paddle blade and require different mechanical momentum to accelerate them. Therefore to coordinate the body mass rotation around the blade as a whole, an athlete must manage all parts of the body in a conjunction. The further the parts of the body are from the center of rotation at the blade, the more important becomes their control. All forces in kayak technique pass through a few common points, which allow control the whole motion. These points are, paddle blade, pulling on top hands, opposite side, including opposite hip and shoulder, and the footrest. Together these points form a kind of a virtual dynamic trapezium-shaped figure. This figure traditionally named a frame in canoe practice. The notion frame means a virtual dynamic biomechanical structure formed by the athlete within his body to propel the boat. The frame also could be imagined as a kind of a mechanical robot formed within the athlete's body to connect the main power application points and simplify control of the technique. The frame is the athlete's tool to rotate all parts of his, her body around the blade as a single biomechanical object and manage the feeling. The main purpose to use the notion frame in the coaching practice is a need to transform the longitudinal motion of the athlete's legs into a rotational movement of whole body around the paddle blade, and eventually maximize the use of the legs to propel the boat. The frame can be modified depending on the current technique element to improve. More or less points can be included in the frame to resolve different technique targets as the pulling feet the elbow or shoulder of the pulling hand, etc. The paddle shaft constitutes a permanent physical axis of the frame to transmit force. So, the frame can also be modified around the paddle using different points of the athlete's body to allocate different elements of entire motion. Coach and athletes can experiment with this tool during the technique sessions changing the feeling to impact an eventual technique target. The fundamental principles to modify the frame or that all points included in the frame must a be the important athlete's force or mechanical momentum application points, b be managed in a conjunction, and c consider the unique common point of rotation forward at the blade. In canoeing practice also can be found the terms lock, box, block, wheel, etc. which are used with an identical purpose. Connections a practical way to merge the effort of remote points of the athlete's body within the frame traditionally is described in canoeing by the notion connections. From kinesiology point of view, the connections are kinetic links to transfer energy between the points of a biomechanical system without dissipation.
These kinetic links are physically formed by the chains of muscles involved in execution of the motion, muscles synergies. The muscle synergies are neurological patterns of co-activation of groups of muscles recruited by a single neural command. The synergies are neurophysiological entities just partly managed by the athletes by setting technique goals. The most fundamental in kayak synergy connects the athlete's legs to rotate his upper body and opposite hip forward around the blade. This connection joins the effort of a large chain of muscles from the footrest till the paddle blade within a single quick action. All this chain must act as a single muscle and be activated by a single neurological command. This movement is uncomfortable. The intention to move forward the same side shoulder and hip together is opposite to a natural human walking muscle synergy across the torso. But this synergy is very important as it generates the main mechanical momentum to glide the boat in the air phase. So, the connections are a practical way to make the chains of muscles between the remote points of a body work as a single muscle, and relax the other muscles which don't need to be involved in the motion. The lock the expression lock the frame means a mobilization of the joints involved in the trapezium to move it as a rigid independent entity able to channel the energy. The frame is locked by a counteraction of the pulling arm and the pushing leg. As a consequence of this counteraction, the pressure of the leg on the footrest produces a reaction force. This reaction force returns back into the trapezium propagates all the way around it till the blade and joins the segments into a virtual unit. So, the lock means a restriction of the flexibility of whole chain of involved segments by the pressure from its one end. The pushing leg injects the energy into the frame, makes it rigid and allows to develop the force on the blade by the pressure on the footrest. Timing the legs should start rotating the frame before the blade starts immersing. This is an essential requirement to lock the frame. The athlete should stand on the footrest before the catch as a consequence of the setup after the previous stroke, and initiate next stroke by the pressure on the footrest, rather than by the pulling effort of the arm. The action of the feet against footrest must be quick enough to make this effort circulate around whole trapezium and reach the paddle blade before it touches the water. The top hand plays an important role in this action. It should start the pushing movement along the shaft slightly overtaking the torso rotation to make the blade moving fast enough relatively to the water, see above and the video lock the blade. If there is a weakness in the frame then the power generated at the footrest will be lost. Relaxation An effective lock aims to make the frame rigid mainly by the forces circulating within it, rather by the effort of the muscle stabilizers. The reaction force from the footrest propagates through the frame and creates a kind of a direct power bridge between the footrest and the blade which allows decrease the work of the muscle stabilizers to maintain the posture and control the relaxation of the athlete. The connections in fact are just a traditional canoeing term to indicate the synergies required to be involved in the motion. The connections allow release the muscles breaks for the motion making the movement more energy efficient and powerful. The control of relaxation is a fundamental function of the frame. Athletes feeling The quickly locked frame specifically helps to improve the athlete's feeling. The athlete should feel the lock as an instantaneous click bringing all parts of his body together. For example requiring an athlete to connect the chain footrest, opposite hip, top hand, we are activating the synergy of interior muscles across the abdomen area. This is a crucial connection to control the acceleration of the body mass. Or, we can ask an athlete to connect the chain blade, footrest, to control equality of the force transmission from the blade into the boat. And so on. The propelling torque should be balanced to obtain the center of the whole body rotation located outside of the boat at the blade, and not inside of the boat.
The axis of the paddle shaft needs to be kept parallel to the chest of the athlete as much as possible during all stroke. The athlete can draw kind of an imaginary line connecting him and the blade, and keep his pelvis parallel to it to have a virtual remote center of rotation at the blade. The pulling hand should cede to the shaft and let to be moved forward as a part of the whole body rotation around the blade. When this task is performed efficiently, all parts of the body, including the pulling hand, should move only forward past the blade. The frame felt rolling around the blade. Benefits A. The application of concept of the frame on the paddling technique gives priority to the legs drive as a central motor of the boat propulsion versus to the torso twisting. The balance of energy applied by the legs and the upper body reaches approximately about 70 to 30 percent. B. It facilitates the relaxation of the muscle stabilizers by using the reaction forces of the pressure of the legs on the footrest to increase the stiffness of the system. C. The frame allows minimize the amount of controlled points and simplify the athlete's task and feeling. An athlete feels more powerful with a good locked frame even he spends less energy. D. Using of the concept of frame reduces the scattering and absorption of the athlete's energy as it propagates through the body. In a biomechanical context, the scattering means a deviation in directions of the energy transfer, and the absorption means a conversion of the energy to other forms of energy due to the flexibility, elasticity and viscosity of the system. The rotation around the blade should integrate the previously mentioned tasks, set up, lock the blade and make pivot and make them work together. The efficiency of the rotation forward around the blade depends on simultaneous coordination of these tasks.